Hello, so we're going to begin with a very short demonstration of how a Zener operates. So I've got two circuits effectively here and they're connected up to an oscilloscope. On the left hand side we've got a Zener diode with an operating point of 5.6 volts and we've got a resistor, a current limited resistor for that Zener diode. On the right hand side we've got simply two resistors, a resistor chain and we've got two waveforms. The red one is for the right hand side and the orange one is for the left hand side. And we're starting off with a, uh, a DC waveform, a DC level with a one volt sine wave riding on it. And we're going to do the simulation very quickly. So there you are, you can see that, that effectively both outputs are, are the same. And then we're going to start to change the value of the DC level. And I'm going to take it up to five volts now. And we'll notice immediately that the top waveform, the orange, we can see that the, the top part of the sine wave is flattened off. And it's flattened off at about 5.6 volts. That's what the Zeno diode does. It breaks down and conducts at 5.6 volts. And we'll see that as we take this value further up, I'll take it up to 7 volts, we get closer and closer to a flat line for the orange level. Whilst the resistor here, resistor chain, there has been no change in the ripple whatsoever. And we take this up to 10 now, and we have a flat line at 5.6 volts. So that's what a Zener does. Once it reaches its breakdown voltage, it's able to conduct large amounts of current, relatively large amounts of current, for very, very small changes in resistance. It has something called dynamic resistance. Once it's broken down, it's conducting, its resistance is dynamic. What this effectively means is that we can change the current quite substantially for very small changes in resistance. Therefore, the voltage across the Zener remains stable. That's why it's so useful in voltage regulator and voltage reference circuits. The purpose of a voltage regulator is to provide a stable voltage over a range of currents. And the Zener is one of the most important circuit elements you will find in a voltage regulator. And we're going to look at it in a little bit more depth as we go through. Hi, so today we're looking at a Zener diode. Uh, there's a circuit symbol for a Zener diode. Looks like a normal diode except it's got two arms on either side. Zener diodes are always operated in reverse bias, which means their, their um, cathode, cathode terminal is connected or pointing to the positive of the circuit. And its anodic terminal is pointing to ground. Zeners are manufactured to have um, something known as a breakdown voltage. They break down at low voltages in comparison to normal diodes and they stay stable at that voltage. And what we see here is, is a, a list of breakdown characteristics for a set of diodes. The one we're using is a 5 volt 6, not shown on here. But when we use a Zener, we want to use the Zener in such a way that when it breaks down, its voltage remains stable. And that means we need to provide a current somewhere in this area here, where we've got a nice flat line, nice flat vertical line, in order to get the Zener to stay stable, to make its voltage stay stable. I've done a quick simulation here, I won't show you the simulation, but you can see for the Zener we're using here, 5 milliamps gives 5.6 volt output voltage measured by XMM2. Therefore the operating point for this Zener is 5 milliamps. If we go below 5 milliamps, we start to get what's called to the knee of the curve there the knee and that isn't very good you can get quite a lot of voltage fluctuation with low currents we want to make sure that we provide a nice stable operating current for our Zener the minimum we'll be looking at for this one would be 5 milliamps in the second slide we have to talk about the diode and the maximum power that it can dissipate this model here has a maximum power dissipation of half a watt, 500 milliwatts. If you go above 500 milliwatts for any extended length of time, your dial will just burn out. It will cease to operate. So 
you can do some some uh, basic calculations. You can follow these yourself. I'm not going to go through them, but we can work out that the maximum current for this diode for any extended period of time would be 89 milliamps, 0 0.089 of an amp. To make sure that our Zeno operates correctly, we would always operate it in series with some type of current limiting resistor. If you don't do this, your Zeno will just be destroyed. So you must always have some type of resistor or some other circuit element that limits the current through the diode to an acceptable load, to an acceptable limit, I beg your pardon. And I've, d I've done some maths here, which I'll show you on the next slide. We so this is the final slide before we look at the Zeno itself in, in a proper regulator circuit. I've used this as an input voltage for the regulator. This is the circuit I've used to show it. And that's what we're going to be using in the next two circuits. That will be our input. It's a 13.6 volt DC with a 1 volt sine wave riding on top of it. I've gone for um, a conservative value for R1. It's going to mean that the output current in the first circuit will be rather modest. But then again, what we lose in output current, we gain in efficiency in terms of less power dissipation. You can play around with these figures yourself. As long as you stay within, I would say, a, a comfortable rule of thumb is within 25% of the minimum and maximum values. So you can experiment with the value of R1 for the next circuit as long as you keep it within 25% of the minimum value and 25% of the maximum value. To be clear about that, that's 25% above the minimum value and 25% below the maximum okay. value. We have our Zener set up in, a, in the simplest regulator circuit imaginable. From previous calculations, we calculated the current limiting resistor for this circuit R2 should be somewhere around about 1K. And in this case, we also have a load, a load resistor R1 and that's set at a maximum value of one, um, 5k. The input waveform is produced by a function generator and we've got a DC level of 13.6 volts with a 1 volt sine wave riding on that and you'll see that that's raised there and we've got the other channel of the oscilloscope looking at the output of the Zener diode which should be 5.6 volts You'll recall from our calculations the Zener should have an operating point of about 5 milliamps and at that point we get 5.6 volts out of it. That's its rated voltage. That's what it breaks down at. When we do the simulation we're going to reduce the value of R1 and see what happens to both the Zener operating current and the voltage across the Zener. And we'll see there's a limit at which the Zener no longer operates effectively as a regulator. So we're going to do the simulation here and we can see our input voltage, nice big ripple on it and the output voltage across the Zener looks flat doesn't it? It does look flat. It actually isn't in reality and the way we can look at that is we go on to, we're going to look at channel A on the oscilloscope, we're going to choose the AC coupling and then we're going to start to reduce the voltage per division and you'll see that there is a ripple it's probably around about um, a 10 millivolt ripple peak to peak we can see that there much much smaller so that the Zener is operating pretty effectively in regulating that input voltage there so when we do the the sim we're going to start to take R1 down and we'll see that I'm reducing it by 5% per step and I do it quite quickly. There's very little difference in this ripple, this output ripple. Um, we've still at the Zener operating current of about 5 milliamps and we're still at 5.6. So I've reduced the load here by, by about 50% and the Zener is still operating, it's still regulating the output voltage. However, we will reach a point where we go below the Zener operating current and we also fall below the Zener voltage here and if we keep going we're going to start to see this ripple get bigger and bigger until we reach a point 
at 15% where we've got quite a large ripple we'd need to look at that again and you can see the 100 millivolt ripple if we go further down it becomes even larger so in terms of this Zener operating as a regulator I would say it's effective up until about 15% of 5k which is about 700 to 800 ohms uh, to be on the safe side probably closer to, to about 1k which means essentially it's not much use because not only um, do we can we only use it with a relatively high um, value load we also see that the the current for this circuit maximum current that it can produce given these conditions is about 9 10 milliamps which is just isn't very much at all you won't be able to achieve very much with that we we could um we could improve the situation by changing the value of r2 but effectively then we're going to lose power we're going to dissipate more power in the zener in different conditions so this circuit demonstrates to how a zener works but to make it effective as a voltage regulator we need to use it in another circuit with additional circuitry okay so we'll move on from here okay so we've got the uh, the Zener regulator but this time we're using um, a transistor and that transistor is going to provide the current gain you'll see with this circuit we can take the load considerably lower and we get a lot lot more current so it's far more effective as a voltage regulator we have much larger swings in the load and we can provide more current uh, one note of caution I'm not 100% sure that Multisim simulates this correctly. Reason being that on the data sheet for the ZTX689B, which we can look at here very briefly, we'll see that even under the best conditions, the gain is given as 400. And you've got a practical power dissipation here of 1.5 watts. And that these are absolute maximum ratings. If we look at the sim that I've got set up here at the moment, to all intents and purposes, the output current here is at about just a little bit shy of one amp. And yet we've got a volt drop across the transistor of 8.7 volts, give or take. So therefore, in this situation, this transistor would be destroyed because the power dissipation through the transistor, you'll recall power is equal to volts times current, would be somewhere around about 8 watts. So some of it's got to be taken with a pinch of salt, but you will see that it does work far more effectively um, as as a regulator, far more effective than, the, than the, the former one we had. The other thing we need to note is the base current here. And the base current here is this, this uh, 556 microamps is producing, according to, to this simulation, um, a collector current of 815 which which would you'd be looking at at a gain of, uh, of a thousand plus well that simply isn't given on the data sheet the data sheet data sheet gives maximum gains of of four five hundred so <clears throat> in order to achieve these sort of gains we would need yet more additional circuitry which I'll leave you to work out how that can be done but we'll just do the sim very very quickly and it's it's exactly the same as we had before we've got um, this is our operating voltage here across the Zener and the reason this works so effectively is because this transistor is connected in in what is known as um, emitter follower mode so what the emitter follower does the emitter of the transistor mimics exactly what happens at the base here so if we've got effective voltage regulation at the base, which is provided by the Zener, the voltage at the emitter will follow that voltage. The only difference being that you, we lose the 0.6 of a volt switch on voltage between the base and the emitter between this point here and here. So if we've got 5.6 volts here, our output will be a flat 5 volts there. The difference is, of course, that a transistor is able to provide much more current being a, a current this is a current gain configuration which as I said earlier makes it far more effective as a regulator it's still not perfect it still requires additional circuitry but 
for where we want to be at this point in our studies it's a very very good way of showing how a zener can be used as a voltage regulator in a circuit or a voltage reference. So the point of the zener in this circuit is to provide a stable voltage for the base of this transistor and this transistor provides the current for our circuit in this case R2 and it provides a stable output voltage which is 0.6 of a volt lower than the voltage at the base of the zener. And that's about it. Okay, thank you for listening.